Hello everybody, B-Metal is here, welcome to another weekly heavy metal album review. This week I'm reviewing Michael Romeo, War of the Worlds Part 2, released by Inside Out Music on March 25th, 2022. Now, of course, the legendary guitarist and main songwriter of Symphony X brings his second solo album four years after releasing War of the Worlds Part 1. This debut to me is a masterpiece of power progressive symphonic metal and it was ranked number three in my 2018 ranking. Now I'm a massive Symphony X fan and probably a bit biased in favor of any music coming from Michael Romeo. So let's see how War of the Worlds part two look like. As with the debut part two, Big difference to Symphony X, besides the vocals of course, and I'll get back to that later, is the intense use of symphonic passages with a film score vibe to the whole album. The album features 11 songs in 55 minutes. There is an instrumental as an intro and as also as an outro. And the album follows the same theme from part one, so HG wells with a modern day sci-fi wells is most of you probably know is sometimes called the father of science fiction and wrote a book with the same title as uh, that michael took for this album the bulk of the album was written at the same time as part one but there are some differences with the final result for starters there's a new singer dino jelusic he is a Croatian rock singer, musician and songwriter. He is the founder and principal songwriter and lead singer of progressive rock band Animal Drive. I personally first heard Dino in two songs from 2020's Magnus Carlson's Free Fall album named We Are The Night. So he sang in two songs there and I highly recommend it. I was already impressed uh, with this, uh, his participation in that album. And to me, he sounds a lot like Rosso Allen from Symphony X, obviously. So there's no surprise that Romeo liked him and, and, and saw a fit in, in his band. But there's also a strong Coverdale feel in, in Dino's voice. So it's this combination of... Uh, uh, Russell Allen with David Coverdale so gives the album a little bit more a hard rock feeling compared to the high heavier part one the rhythmic section remains the same with drummer John Macaluso and bassist John De Servio. introduction part two opens the album in a similar way as part one it sets the scene for an album with a lot of symphonic elements influenced by great film score composers such as John Williams or Hans Zimmer. Other cinematic instrumental songs are Mothership, Hunted and Brave New World Ultra. Divide and Conquer, which was the first single and Destroyer, are some of the heaviest tracks with a strong Symphony X from the five The New Mythology Suit era, especially due to uh, Dino sounding like Alan, particularly in those two tracks. Since this Symphony X album is an amazing one, I'm totally cool with it, so very strong songs. Another heavy one is Parasite, which even sounds like Pantera during the verses. It's quite interesting. And I want to come back to Destroyer because this is a very special song, as it's the first time that Romeo wrote and played a song on a seven-string guitar. It is also featuring this Middle Eastern flavor, as he also experimented by playing with a sas, which is a Turkish string instrument. Then we have also Metamorphosis, which is a cool melodic prog song with an intro that reminds me of Dream Theater or Rush. Uh, it's all <laughs> uh, similar in that sense. And a verse that sounds to me more like a, a heavy version of White Snake. Hybrids is my favorite song on the album and I love this guitar solo. So on that note, of course, all over the album, the guitar work is fantastic with jaw dropping solos, cool riffs, but also nicer pages and slower parts. Machine and Mesh 
is the longest song on the album with about nine minutes and a lot of room to go to different places, keyboards, symphonic arrangements, and another cool guitar solo. This is as proggy as you can get in this album. Now, if I be big here, I have the impression that part one was heavier and a bit stronger than part two, but there are no bad songs in, in part two. Maybe just before the down gets a bit too much into ballads territory and it's my least favorite song on the album, but by no means it's a bad song. So let's wrap up here. As in part one, War of the Worlds part two features a lot of super heavy cinematic music and obviously lots of guitars to impress any seasoned player or prog metal fan. Musicianship is superb and the new singer Dino brought a lot of power to this album. The arrangements on this album are great, there's a lot happening and the symphonic parts are truly impressive. A very good album, 82 out of 100, recommended for any Symphony X fan or prog metal in general fan. And certainly, if you liked part one, you will enjoy part two as well. So thanks for being here, for listening, and be mad always.